Uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started today. Um, we have a wonderful informational session uh, coming your way from the Washington Area Community Investment Fund as we um, expound on the, the topic and the notion of getting more bang for your business buck. And so, you know, we actually are, are quite lucky, in fact, to have with us on the line a gentleman that I'd like to introduce to you. And uh, this is Mr. Ashil AQ, and he is a certified business uh, valuation expert, and um, we're very pleased to have him with us today. How are you, Ashil? I'm doing very well, Lucien. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Hey, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you on the line with us today as we really get into the topic of understanding how to value one's business. And so the question may be raised, of course, for those who, of you who are on the line with us today, and for those of you who will uh, watch this, and of course, um, be able to play this back, why is it so important that you understand how to value your business, your portion of a company? Um, you know, and what are the reasons you would want to, to do this? And so simply put, a business valuation uh, helps you just to establish that baseline value. Um, and it helps you to create and make more informed decisions about your financial goals, the business's strategies, your objectives, and those things that really affect your bottom line. Because at the end of the day, if you were to consider your business a house, an investment, um, it's best that you understand what makes that house more valuable. Uh, maybe changing the wallpaper out isn't as valuable as adding a bathroom per se, or an addition onto the home such that it now it's, it's a different uh, formula that's used in order to value that house. And so we have to look at our businesses the, the exact same way, uh, rather we be in service industries or selling a service or a product. And so with that being said, um, you know, we're going to we'll move into the topics of understanding why it's important uh, to know, but to, to what are your objectives? What do you want to do? Is it that you're looking to value your own company for sale? Is it that you're looking to value um, another company that you would like to acquire? And of course, we often uh, recommend here at WAKEIF that you should explore all areas in terms of advancing and growing your company, rather it be organically or through acquisition. If you're in the startup phase and you haven't quite um, got everything you know, rolling with your business, then of course, buying into a business or buying a company is a shortcut to express your success. And so um, I kind of went on there, but um, you know, Ashil, how do you feel about that? And just in terms of how people may think about valuing uh, their company absolutely what you said is you know it's right on point i think uh so many people really don't understand what business valuation is some have never even heard about business valuation until they have a situation that you know requires them to determine how much their company is worth and so we're going to discuss that today the different situations where uh people have to uh look for business valuation expert for valuation and then we're going to talk about also what exit strategies to put in place for those who are planning um, to um, transfer their business in the future, you know, and those are things that are critical for business owners to know, so they are not surprised when that moment comes. So you said it best, you said it best. And so uh, with that being said, it's about um, a 10 past, we're going to dig right in. I know that the information that we're going to be able to go over here is going to be extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important that we jump right to it so that the people are given what they came here for. So with that uh, being said, Ashil, uh, feel free to uh, take over the presentation rights of the screen here and right. we can go ahead and hop right into it. And don't forget, folks, in terms of having questions, uh, enter those into the question and answer session, a uh, section rather here. Don't forget them. And of course, we will have time for uh, questions at the end of the presentations today as well. So like, write those things down. Don't forget them because we want to make sure we cover and answer all questions today. All Take right. it away, Shirley. Thank you. Thank you, Lucian. Thank you, everybody, for being part of this presentation today. 
Well, again, my name is Achille Eku. I'm the president and CEO of the Washington Valuation Group. Uh, we are a business valuation firm located in Maryland in DC, and we specialize in business valuation exclusively. So um, today we're going to talk about business valuation and exit strategies, which is uh, a topic that is very important for small business owners today, especially, uh, you know, can we say pre, uh, pro, um, let me say, after this pandemic, I mean, the pandemic is still ongoing, so we can't, we can't really say that, but, you know, there's so many, so much pain out there, uh, businesses are really going through tough times, so uh, they are struggling to figure out what is it that I need to do in my business, should I keep the business, should I sell it, should I, you know, find it, and an investor who's going to add, you know, uh, you know, more equity to this business, or uh, add more capital to this business, so we have to explore all these options today and see what's the best one that's going to fit you. So you have to decide on that, but you have to decide based on knowledge. All right. Here's my biography here. Um, it's very, very, uh, you know, it's a lot of things that I've done in the past 20 years. And uh, uh, I'm going to be uh, just talking about a few ones that are very uh, present. Uh, I'm currently the state chapter president for a National Association of Certified Valuation and Expert, um, which is the largest organization in the country today that certifies and trains business valuation experts. So I'm the state chapter president for Maryland and DC. I, I'm also a board member, um, elected board member uh, on that aspect organization. Uh, as you see, I'm the, like I said earlier, I'm the president and CEO of the Washington Valuation Group. Uh, which is my own firm. Um, and to be able to do valuation, you have to have a certification, which is uh, the CVA Certified Valuation Analyst Certification. So I specialize in a variety of valuation for tax purpose, transaction purpose, and litigation as well. Um, last, yes, let's say uh, <clears throat> 2017, I was I published a book in 2017 titled 30 Frequently Asked Questions in Business Valuation, which we're going to talk about later at the end of this uh, presentation so you understand how important this book is. All right, so let's stop there. Now, um, let's talk about the, the agenda today. We have two, um, two sections or two parts of this presentation today. The first part is going to be squarely on business valuation, um, and we're going to cover what business valuation is, why you need a business valuation, how, how to find an expert, uh, what documents you need to provide for evaluation, um, how long it takes to do evaluation generally, and um, the, the cost of evaluation. And, uh, and I'll give you a general idea of how we do the evaluation. What kind of, uh, what step do we take to value your company? So just give general uh, information on that. The second part will be specialized on exit planning, exit planning, especially on exit strategy. All right, so what is exit plan? What is an exit plan? What is the process of uh, putting together an exit plan? Uh, what is the team that you need to put together to get that done? Uh, what do you, uh, why do you want to exit your company? Reasons why people exit their companies. What are the options you have? and the steps that you need to take to sell your business at the highest price. So without leaving any money, uh, any money on the table, which is, which is what we want, right? So, and uh, some of the factors that influence the value of a company, we have to discuss those factors. All right, so part one, business valuation. Uh, so what is business valuation? Well, business valuation is an art and a science as well of determining the value of an interest. Uh, it's a process of determining the value of a business, a business ownership or an interest. Now, an interest is usually, you know, part of a business, part of a, of, of a, let's say, for example, if it's a, you know, you, you're, an, you're an investor in a business, you own some shares in that business. So to determine the value of those shares, we have to determine the value of the whole company and then from there, you know, determine the value of shares. Now, this uh, comes, this industry comes from the 1920s um, uh, IRS published appeals and revenue memorandum. Uh, it's called Arm 34. That was passed by Congress to solve issues related to prohibition, the 18th Amendment. And now the 18th Amendment, um, it's a law that was passed by Congress in 1920 
uh, that prohibited the uh, manufacturing, transportation, and selling of alcoholic beverages around the country. At that time, alcohol was the opium of people, really. So we had, they had to find a way to uh, stop that. And by doing so, they had to, um, you know, uh, affect, uh, th that law affected so many companies, so many uh, businesses, uh, they lost, you know, the asset, they lost their revenue, they lost uh, a lot of money, and the IRS had to find a way to compensate for those losses. So that's how they were able to pass this law, this memorandum, and that allowed people to be able to determine the value of the losses for those businesses and compensate them for those losses. It's called the, uh, the uh, uh, Appeals and Revenue Memorandum 34. So why do you wanna do a business valuation? Now we're gonna talk about reasons that may oblige you know oblige you to do a business valuation because you know you maybe run your business normally and then you never think about a valuation and then all of a sudden there's a situation and once you find out about how to solve the situation they say hey you've got to do a business valuation and like what is that never heard about it before so let's let's talk about those purposes there is four types of business valuation the first one are uh, valuations that deals with taxes, tax purpose. And these happen when there is a situation of estate, when somebody, you know, deceased, passes away, you know, that his business becomes part of the estate. So therefore we have to value the estate. Gift, when you own the business and you want to gift it to your, your heirs, your kids, all right, your relatives, you know, you can't just transfer your business like that. You got to pay taxes on that and also income tax. Transaction purpose, in cases of acquisition, when you want to buy a business, you want to sell a business, you want to invest into a business, okay? You need to make sure that you understand how much that business is worth. Buy sell agreements is a document that put together by partners of a business or shareholders that's going to delineate you know, what needs to be done in case of a trigger event. A trigger event could be somebody who wants to leave, who wants somebody passed out, somebody, you know, anything that, um, you know, happens that a shareholder is no longer able to keep his shares in the business, how to buy somebody's out, for example. Mergers and etc. cetera. Uh, litigation purpose. Litigation happens a lot lately. Uh, divorce cases, you know, a lot of companies are being, uh, going through divorces, um, you know, for husband and wife, you know, uh, so, you know, each party wants to have his share or her share of the equity of the company. So partnership and shareholders disputes. Okay, we have that a lot also today. Bankruptcy happens a lot today as well. Um, damages, calculation, etc. And then the last one is regulatory purpose. Uh, regulatory purpose is most concerned with um, employee stock ownership um, plans, uh, impairment testing, financial reporting, and things of that nature. Michelle, but before you leave this page, yes, I want to make a a point and ask you a question here. Mm -hmm. Many clients who call in are often at a point where they require a strategic partner, otherwise known as an investor, mm -hmm. and so instead of seeking uh, loans or debt, they're looking for that expertise and also that financial backing that will allow for them to go to the, to the next level, right? Mm -hmm. To take on larger contracts, larger purchase orders, whatever the case may be, right. depending on their service or product. Uh, when it comes to valuing the business for the purpose of an investor or an investment, um, is that something that certified business uh, valuation experts uh, do for people? So if I were looking to bring on a strategic partner to my business, would you be able to let me know, hey, here are the target uh, figures you should use in terms of the valuation to go after that investor who can bring you to the next level? Is that something that you guys cover? Absolutely. That's exactly what why, why we're in business. You know, if you are looking for an equity investor, you know, or if you are an investor, you're looking for to buy shares in a company, 
well, how are you going to determine the price of a share of that company if you don't have a valuation? Now, companies that are on Wall Street, middle market companies, you know, people who do IPOs to go to Wall Street, it's easy. You can look at the stock and see how much the company is worth based on the number of stocks uh, that's, that's being offered, the number of shares that's being offered. But uh, for private companies, small companies that are not, you know, you know, on the market, you know, you have to determine the value by doing the valuation and then having the value of the whole company and then deter, d- dividing by the number of shares that you're going to be issuing so that any equity investor will know, hey, this is how much I'm going to buy, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to purchase for a share and how many shares you want to purchase, you just multiply by the number of shares you want to buy. So it's absolutely necessary. So, so in other words, if I'm in business, I'm, I'm starting out, I'm doing pretty, you know, pretty okay for myself. If someone approaches me or if I want, say, $300,000 and someone says, well, hey, if I give you $300,000, then I want 30% or 50% of your company, I would then take that figure, then go to someone like yourself uh, and as, as a CVA, and then they, you would be able to let me know whether or not that's a fair price in Correct. the marketplace. Correct. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, how do you find a business valuation expert? Um, And that's another question. The next question is, okay, you know, once you know you have to do a business valuation, now where do you find those folks? Where are they? Nobody knows where they are, right? Anyway, so there are associations out there that train and certify those, those folks, those business valuation analysts. And there are three of them that are mostly known. Um, the National Association of Certified Valuators and Analysts, NACVA, is the largest one of those, you know, and that's where I belong. It's the largest in the world, by the way. And so uh, you can go to that website and then uh, they have a way uh, forward to look up appraisers in your area. All right. So you can go to their website. The American Society of Appraisers, that's the second one. Um, you can also go to their website and find uh, appraisers in your area. The American Institute of Certified Public Accountant, AICPA. All right. Uh, that's for mostly for CPAs. Now, not, not all CPAs are able, are certified to do business valuation. That's something you have to understand. Your accountant or CPA doesn't necessarily have the training that's needed to, to value your business. All right. So you have to be very careful when you go to your accountant and say, hey, I want to know how much my business is worth. You know, you have to check if they're certified. You ask them if they're certified to do business valuation. Now, um, you can do a Google search. You know, that's the, probably the easiest way uh, to, if you can, if you don't know those associations, you can just go Google search for certified valuation analysts or experts in your area and then see what comes up and then call um, the, uh, the person. All right. Now let's talk about documents. Once you, you find your business valuation expert, next thing he's going to ask you is, I need some documents in order for me to value your company. And you're going to be like, okay, what do you need? All right, here are, this is not an exhaustive list of documents, but I'm giving you um, pretty much a good number of documents that may be asked. Not all of them may be asked at the same time for the same valuation. And it also depends on the purpose of the valuation. But the most important documents are your tax returns, as you can guess, right? They may ask you for three to five years, you know, of your tax returns. And that will depend on the type of valuation. Three years are usually required for transaction valuations. For example, you want to know how much your company is worth for sale. You want to sell a company, you want to buy a company, or, you know, for investment purpose, someone wants to invest in your company. Things like that. Three to five, three years is usually what's asked. But five years is mandatory for tax valuations. All right. So that is absolutely mandatory. Five year, look, the past five year tax return are required for tax return that, for valuation that's going to be uh, going to the IRS, you know, because the Internal Revenue Service is going to get that report that the expert is going to issue. But in order for them to make sure that the number that the expert came up with is correct. They need to have enough information, enough detailed information about your business to make sure that uh, nothing is being left unchecked. All right, so uh, three to five years tax uh, financial statements. All right, income statement, balance sheet. Now you find, we find some of those, um, we find them in in your tax return as well, but 
uh, you can have your canon give us more information about those documents too. Um, now we may ask additionally for your payroll, your fixed asset depreciation and inventory reports. Okay, your account payable and account receivables aging reports. We may need that. Uh, we may need your corporate records, your bylaws, articles of incorporation, et cetera, buy-sell agreement, anything else that you may have. Um, your lease agreement, we may need that. You know, how long is your lease? We need to know that. What's the terms of your lease? Are they, uh, are you paying fair market value for your lease? Or are you under, uh, are you paying a lower case? Most, some companies own the, the building that they, they do their business in. And because they own the building, they do the business in, they usually charge their lease, you know, lower than what the market is supposed to charge them. So we need to see that, make sure that you are paying your fair, uh, the fair share. And um, shareholder, your shareholder agreements, you know, you have shareholders, you know, they have to have an agreement that delineates, like I said earlier, what needs to be done in case of a trigger event. Uh, loan documents, you have, you may have some loans with some with banks. We need to see those loans, what the terms of the loans are and things like that, interest you're paying, and when are they, when are they due. Pending litigation, litigation that exists, we need to know because that may affect the value of your company. If you have a pending litigation, we need to take that into account to find out, to determine the value of this company because if we are valuing a company that's, that is being um, uh, attacked in court, you know, that has a litigation in court, that is a potential danger in terms of the value of the business. And that may not be interested, uh, interesting for, the, uh, for, for an investor. He wants to know that, hey, this company is in court right now. They have a huge litigation. This may be a danger. This may be a higher risk for me. So they need to know that. Um, details or documents uh, about investments. Now, any investment that your company have made uh, in other, in, you know, companies or other assets outside of a company, we need to have that information uh, because by valuing that company, uh, valuing your company requires us to value the assets in which you've invested already to find out what is the value of your shares of your investment in those companies and bring them back to your company in order to, you know, to value uh, your entire company. Um, forecast and projections. Very important forecast. Um, you know, if when you start a company, um, you're running your company for a couple of years, you have a forecast. You're projecting that this is how much I'm thinking to be making for the next five years. Projections are usually for companies, for startups. They have no history. You know, they're starting up and they have to guess some numbers, but it has to be based on some, um, some solid assumptions. And so projections are important. Uh, business plan, you know, your business plan, you know, provides all the information about your business, especially for startups. You know, when you start a company, you're looking for equity partners, you know, to invest in your company, you have no history. So the only document that a business, um, uh, an investor is going to be looking, um, you know, for is going to be your business plan. He wants to know what is, what, what's your business about? What's your plan? What's your goal? What's your objective? What's, you know, how much you plan of making the next five years, next 10 years, you know, how you plan on selling your business, you know, what are the marketing strategies you put in place, all the information, we need to have that as well. Uh, details of major contracts, you know, if you're looking to get a contract with the federal government, you know, you know what kind of contract are you looking for? And then, you know, are you when are you expecting that contract? Things like that. So it depends on the purpose and it depends on the type of valuation you're doing. So not all the documents may be asked at the same time. So just for people to know, it's not all of them that will be asked, but uh, you may be asked those documents even more. Hmm? Let me insert, Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll make rather a quick uh, public service announcement okay. based on what you've said just now with Shield. Mm -hmm. So folks, he can't and they can't do anything unless you have your taxes filed, okay? Um, you all of this just means make sure that your books are being kept uh, up to date and in order. OK, if we have folks out there that haven't filed their taxes or you're severely behind, don't have the fear in it. Don't have the shame. Face it head on file. If you owe, get on a payment plan. 
or if you owe a significant amount, go forward with an offer and compromise and OIC and have that debt reduced so that you can get on the right foot, okay? Just a quick PSA out there, all right, for everybody, um, you have to have your books in order to be able to move forward this year. Right, so, and then to piggyback on what you just said, Lucian, um, you know, one thing that I've noticed also is people don't really put all, um, you know, the, the information or their revenues, you know, on their business, you know, in their in their, their tax documents, right? So they're, they're, they're trying to find a way to lessen their tax liability and then they don't put, you know, those revenues on there. They don't put, they don't declare all their revenues. That has an impact, you know, as you can see, we're going to need those tax returns. And uh, if you haven't declared all your revenues at that point, then you're going to suffer, right? So you're going to lose value because we work with the official documents um, of, of your business. So not anything that you've done, you know, to avoid paying taxes. So think about that. Now, how long does business valuation takes to be completed? Now, this is important because, uh, you know, time frame depends on, uh, uh, you know, a host of, you know, uh, uh, factors here. But in general, uh, it takes about three to six weeks. Now, that doesn't mean we can do evaluation in 10 days. You know, uh, we can do evaluation in 10 days. You can do evaluation in 15 days, 21 days, and up to six weeks. It depends on the situation, depends on the type of evaluation. Um, and uh, usually tax valuations take more time because they require more details. It has a higher threshold in terms of uh, quality assurance. And the detailed report has to be very detailed, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Transaction valuation takes, uh, they usually take less time. Um, you know, we can do that very quickly if you have the documents. Uh, litigation engagement. Now, litigation engagement involves sometimes one part valuation and one, one part uh, um, testifying court. So that's the testifying court part. It's not, you know, something that we can, uh, we have a hold on. So the court proceedings can, you know, vary. It could go from one month to maybe a year, two years. So all these things are things that we don't have control over in terms of, um, uh, testifying court, but so litigation engagement are very complex to determine the value. I mean, the price early enough. So, uh, how much does a business valuation cost? Okay, so depends on the variety of factors. Purpose again, you know, we're coming back to the same issue. Purpose, uh, tax valuation costs a little bit more because you know they they have to be more detailed. Um, it also, it depends on how fast the report is needed. If you need the report like yesterday, you know, hey, you know, we have to leave everything that we're doing to focus on your evaluation. So we're going to need a premium for that. Um, the industry of the business, you know, some business, some industry uh, more recent, for example, the marijuana industry is very recent. So we don't have enough information about companies in that industry that have sold for the past 10 years. So that is an area of, of concern. If we don't have that, the data for that industry, we may not um, accept the report, the evaluation, the engagement. Um, so those are things that we need to take into consideration. The size of the business, a small business, you know, um, costs less than, uh, you know, more complex uh, structured business. Uh, the availability of documents, you know, how early do you, be, do you give us a document? How fast can you send us a document? You know, as opposed to dragging your feet for month and month, you know, we have to charge premium for that. The type of report, you know, the type of report goes hand in hand with the type of valuation. So um, that affects the cost. Standards of value. Uh, let's talk about standards. A uh, few standards that we have to follow. The fair market value is the most known one, uh, especially for tax valuation. Fair value is the standard that's used for dissenting shareholders, monetary dissolution, financial reporting. Investment value is the one that we use for particular investors and intrinsic value are inherent for uh, uh, in the, uh, underlying assets. Now, how do you value your business? Now, this is just for your information. We go through three different approaches, uh, the asset approach, the income approach, and the market approach. So we use those three approaches to value your company and come up with a number um, you know, based on those three approaches. So. All right, let's go to exit strategies. I think we have to speed up a little bit here for time. Exit strategies, the second part of this presentation. What is exit planning? All right, 
it's a comprehensive roadmap to successfully exit a business. You know, so you have to put together a roadmap to figure out, hey, I want to leave, I want to sell this business in the next five years or 10 years. Either, either you want to sell it or you want to pass it on to your heirs. Anyway, it's going to, if the business is going to change hands, then you have to plan for that. It asks and answers all business, personal, financial, legal, and tax questions involved in selling a business. Okay. It includes contingencies for illness, burnout, divorce, and death of the owners. Its purpose is to maximize the value of the business at the time of exit, minimize taxes paid, and accomplish owner's personal and financial goals in the process. That's, that last one is very important. So that's the reason that we have an exit plan. Maximize value, minimize taxes, and then meet your objective in terms of money that you want to get from, your, from the sale of the business. Okay, what is an exit plan process? Now a process, um, it, it may depend, you know, we may follow this process, you know, exactly, but we may not. So it depends on every situation is different, but, but roughly speaking, there is a, there is a data collection phase, there's a valuation and, and analysis phase of the information collected, and then there are recommendations that are issued to the business owner, and then the implementation phase comes in. So usually those four areas that we need to cover. Now, in order for you to do that, you have to have a team. You know, okay, okay you, you, have a, you need to have a team of people that you're going to put together that's going to help you uh, navigate that uh, you know, planning purpose, that planning, that exit planning. So the first one is an investor, uh, an investment banker. Now, you could be a business valuation expert like me as well. Investment banker, an estate planner. Uh, you need to have an attorney. You need to have your CPA around. If you have a financial advisor, you need to have him around or her around. And an insurance professional. So those people are going to help you put together a very robust plan to take into account all these elements that you mentioned previously. Um, that are maximizing value, minimizing taxes paid, and then accomplishing your personal goals. That's the team you need to put together to accomplish that. Now, some of the reasons that we've, we've heard uh, that people give for not having an exit plan, um, you are not sure exactly how to start the process or who to call, all right? So some of the reasons that people say they're not sure about what to do. They have difficulties discussing financial matters and personal goals with outsiders uh, because you know it's private, it's unpleasant, and it's sometimes taboo for some people. When it comes to their money, they don't want to share any information with other people, somebody else that they, know, they don't trust. You spend all your time putting out fires and do not have the time to focus on long-term planning. That's one of the reasons that we hear. Um, you believe the time is not right to start the process, all right? So you're thinking, okay, I got more time. I'm not rushing. I have more time to go. I'm not worried about that so right now. The entire process seems too daunting, all right? People are very, you know, anxious about that process. Okay, you know, why would I do that? Why should I put myself through that stress? And uh, you are afraid of what life without your business would be, you know, if you do nothing. I mean, you know, so you do nothing. So people are afraid of losing their business. They want to sell, they want to leave their businesses, but at the same time, they are afraid of doing so. And so they don't do anything, okay? So they just, you know, they're stuck where they are. Now, what are the benefits of having an exit plan? I think that's the most important part is to know what is it that I'm gaining in putting together a bit, uh, an exit plan. The first one is the control of when and how you're gonna exit your plan, your, your business, all right? So when do you wanna leave your business and how you wanna leave your business is under your control. When you have a plan, you control that process. Maximizing company's value in good and bad times, all right? So what do you need to put in place to make sure that you don't lose the value of your business when the, business, when the economy is doing well, and when the economy is, is, is not doing well. So what we need to put in place, what strategy you have to put in place to protect the value of a company. Minimize, defer, or eliminate capital tax gain. All right, that's important. Taxes are critical so you don't 
you know, lose so much money on taxes so you can keep the maximum uh, of your money. Retain control by generating a number of strategic exit options. All right, so you have control over what options you're going to choose based on what you want to do. All right, so you have options. You choose the best options for the for the for the for you to be able to um, sell your business and get the the most bang, the most uh, bang for the buck. Is that right? A buck for the bank. Okay. Ensure you achieve all your business and personal goals. All right. If you want to sell this business and get five million dollars. You know, you need to put together a plan to achieve that. Reduce your stress and that of your employees and families. Ensure continuity of the business. So those are a few reasons why having a business as an exit plan is important. So you can have, you know, uh, what you're looking for. Now, what are the pitfalls of not having now? What's the opposite of that? The opposite of that is that you have no control over the circumstances of your business. You know, exiting your business is a result of pressure from outside circumstances, um, not because you want to sell your company. Exiting your company on a timetable that's forced on you instead of one that meets your need. You undervalue your company and leave hard money on the table, all right? You pay too much taxes. You lose control over the process by being reactive and limiting your exit options. You fail to realize your business and personal goals. And then you, as a consequence, you suffer psychologically. So it's not a good thing. You lose confidentiality during the sale process or exit process. So those are the pitfalls that you may encounter if you don't plan. Now, what are the situations that warrants you to exit your company? Why do you want to exit your company? First one is retirement. You're planning to retire, okay? So you plan to retire, you have to put together an exit strategy. Um, the business owner's disability or death. Now, when the business is, you know, business owner is disabled or diseases, you know, we have to put together an exit strategy for that. Um, you know, things happen. You know? So when you when you preempt that situation, you have a, in an exit plan that's put in place ahead of that situation happening. You know, that is the the right the right course of action there. Um, key employee un, unanticipated exit. Now you have some employees that can leave and go to your competitors, and therefore that uh, could affect your business. So you have to plan for that. Um, you have no qualified relative to run your business. All right. So if you are trying to um, pass this business on to your heirs or your kid, and no one is interested in running that business, you may want to sell it. You want to exit that company. Now, entrepreneurial burnout is also one of the key reasons that prompt people from ex uh, prompt people to exit their company. Uh, they're tired of running that business. They've been running that business for 20, 30 years. They want to, they want to, you know, they want to sell it, um, you know, and get out of it. On sort approach uh, by a potential buyer. Now, this is what happens sometimes when you're running your business and all of a sudden somebody shows up at your doorsteps or by email and says, hey, I want to buy this company. All right. So you're like, oh my God, what does that mean? You have no idea what it means. Marital dissolution actions, all right, cases of divorce, things that can happen if you're in a business with your wife or your or your your husband, business that is failing or going insolvent, all right? So the company is really doing very really bad. So it's time to get out of it and then limit your losses, all right? Those are the few reasons that uh, people have to exit their companies. Now- Just a, a very, very quick uh, question yes. I have for you, Ashil. Sure. Right now with so many, so many businesses, companies that have either gone out of business or they're uh, doors are currently closed, or they have depressed revenues in the economy. Mm -hmm. There's certainly, they could be targets for acquisition right. if you're looking to buy them right now. Mm -hmm. Have you seen an uptick at all in terms of uh, folks who are targeting these sorts of companies? 
so that they can kind of get a jump on acquiring that that business or to expand their current one to take advantage of the depressed economy? Yeah, I mean, it, this is the same thing that we see in real estate today, right? Um, you know, there's so many people that are approaching my approaching me, calling me and say, hey, we want to buy your house. You want to buy your house? I'm like, Jesus, I don't want to sell it, you know. But when you're in a situation like what we have now for small business, well, this is why it's important to have uh, a, a, an exit strategy ahead of time because the economy can go sour. It could go bad. And that's the right time for buyers to buy. It's not a seller's market at that point. So if you sell when you're in a situation of stress, you know, where you have to sell because you, you know, your company is really failing, going insolvent, well, you will take the first person that shows up at your door. So therefore, you're not going to realize your personal goals or your business goals. So that is important. So it's important to understand the economy, to read the economy and to put together strategic a strategy that, hey, if this is what happens in the economy in the next few months, we talk about the stock market crashing in the next few months, everybody's talking about it. But so what are you gonna do if that happens? You know, I remember when I used to bank, uh, I used to work for Chevy Chase Bank, uh, in, in, you know, 15, 20 years ago, uh, the company wanted to sell and if, if people who live in Maryland and DC, you know, DC area, they know what Chevy Chase Bank uh, was. It was a big bank. They, were, they had footprints, footprints all over the area. And at one point, someone wanted to buy Chevy Chase for $1 billion. And uh, the company refused. And I think six months later, the 2008, um, you know, catastrophe happened. So they had to sell for 500 million. So, you know, just to give you an idea, you know, it's important to understand the market, understand uh, what's going on and plan if things uh, happen. So. And in other words, folks, also there is opportunity Right now, given the state of so many small businesses mm -hmm. who are not doing well. So just think about that and understand how you can capitalize on the moment right now. Right. Thanks, Ashil. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So what exit strategies do you have? We talked about exit strategies. What, what are they? Um, transfer of ownership to family members. That's the thing that you need to consider when you're trying to exit. Uh, transfer ownership to your family members. You have to consider that until that option is no longer possible. Sell your shares to other shareholders. All right, we talked about that too. Uh, sell, sell to management, you know, your employees, your management. Uh, you can sell, sell to them, it's called management buyout. Um, sell to employee stock ownership plan. You know, that's another option. Uh, this is more a little bit more complex, um, but uh, that's an option you have. Uh, sell to a third party, a competitor, or a former or a customer, or somebody else. Um, refinance or recapitalize the business. You know, leverage that the, the assets of the business to get liquidity in order for you to sell your shares. So refinance and recapitalizing. Um, going public, you know, IPO, that's, that's uh, usually available for mid-market companies. Uh, they can go on the market, sell, you know, go, uh, go public, and then therefore they have a lot of liquidities, and everybody is going to be happy, the owners, I mean, the employees and the customers. And uh, so it's it's a good option. It's an excellent option. I think it's the best option, actually. Or, you know, words come to words, liquidate the business. When, when you've tried all this and you can't, you know, you, there's no best option for you, then you have to liquidate, then that's what you need to do. So liquidation, meaning you have to sell the assets. Now, you may not sell all the assets of the company. If the company is big and has different, um, different parts, some of the parts you can sell and you can retain the one that's more lucrative. And so, yeah, so that's that's an option. You don't have to sell the whole company, you can sell part of the company. So now what to do to sell at the highest price? It's important. The goal here is not to leave any money on the table. So what have you, do you have to consider? Plan your business for sale. So put together your exit team, get a business valuation critical to have a baseline and know where you're going from determine the right time to sell you know you want to sell when you are under no pressure all right um and the economy all that stuff you have to take that into consideration lessen your business risk you have to diversify diversify your employees diversify uh your customers diversify you know your partners so that you lessen the business risk to improve the value of a company because that's what investors are looking for. You know, they don't want a company that has one 
uh, one key employee or, or one customer, you know, those type of situations when that customer doesn't, um, you know, doesn't want to work with you anymore or for whatever reason, then your company is at risk. So you want to diversify, put your systems in order, you know, make sure that they run well, your business, your system, your, 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 your management system, your, you know, anything, your, your, you know, HR, all that stuff, all the different processes that you have, make sure that they're operating optimally so that the, the new owner is not going to have any, uh, any stress, you know, or any fear that uh, things may not work out. Um, encourage competition among buyers. So how do you do that? You have to be uh, putting, marking your business, you know, in a way that allows more <clears throat> buyers to come, to come to your business. Uh, structure the deal, consider earn out, you know, meaning that you consider staying in the business for, for a certain time, you know, so that uh, it allows the new owner to acquaint himself to your current customers so that there is a smooth transfer of customers to the new owner. And that's important. Instead of selling the business and, and then let the new buyer, new buyer deal with your customers who may decide, well, I don't know who this guy is. I don't trust him and then take the business somewhere else. So it's important to consider that. Plan for taxes, you know, so that you can have a higher net income at the end of the sale. Now, what factors affect the value of your business? Um, opportunities to increase profits. That's what investors are looking for. If I buy this business, what are my opportunities to increase profit, to make more money? Gross prospects. What are the gross prospects of this industry, of this company, in this location? The uniqueness of the business. You know, what is, makes this company unique? What makes this, um, this, this uh, business unique? You know, it affects supply and demand. You know, that means you have a unique process, a unique product or unique service that people are going to be lining up to get. So um, it's, it's interesting for, for, all, for, for inv investors. Financing options, three year versus five year payment option. You know, you can offer them three years so they can pay quick, they can pay less in interest. And that's a good option for them. Uh, size of the business, you know, small businesses, um, have more risk than, than bigger business, I mean, than bigger businesses. So, and then intangible asset, experienced employees, you know, you know, uh, it's, it's important to have a business that has a lot of uh, well-trained employees, experienced, you know, or certified employees in different fields, different areas, you know, intellectual property, you have some, um, some properties, some intellectual properties that you've, you've protected. You know, it's important for uh, the new acquirer, the new the new buyer, to make sure to know that hey, these are things that could help me make more money on this business. So those are things that are critical um, that you need to for uh, you need to make sure they are in place. All right, and this is where this uh, presentation ends. I have a small um, offer for you here uh, for anyone who wants to do a valuation. Uh, we can give him a fifteen percent discount. Uh, with the uh, discount code WASIF, WASIF event, WASIF event. You call me, you let me know that you were at the uh, WASIF event you, uh, and then we can uh, give you a 15% discount. All right. And uh, in addition, I have a book that was published in 2017. I told you about it earlier. Um, this presentation, all the information I just talked about are in this book. And this book is really, really given for only $20. It's really a deal for small businesses. I wrote this book for small business owners who don't understand a lot of these concepts. And then we want to make sure that they have that book available for them to refer to anytime they have a situation. So you can have it on my website, washingtonvalation.com slash shop. And these are my contact information. And uh, my location is 1629 K Street Northwest. All right, so you can call me anytime. Leave that, leave that screen up for us, Ashil, so that everyone yeah. can see sure. that. Sure, Gather it. Um, okay, and, I, and I'll let you close out. Go ahead. Right, so, well, thank you so much, uh, everybody, for being part of this conversation. And uh, any questions, please go ahead. Yeah, okay. let's go ahead and uh, chime in with the questions, folks. Um, if you can just insert those here. Uh, in the question and answer uh, section, or if you're not sure on how to navigate that, uh, please uh, enter those questions right into the chat here, and we'll go ahead and, and take those.
from you. And while we wait, um, I'm just, uh, I want to insert a question here myself, mm -hmm. Sheil, uh, when it comes to uh, valuing um, a company in order to take on uh, a, a partner, right? right? Um, we, we often have uh, clients or potential or prospective uh, borrowers who uh, call uh, here at WACIF uh, looking to borrow because they're looking to increase their capacity. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they just may not be in a position to um, qualify for the amount of debt or the amount of the loan that they need or that they're asking for, mm -hmm. right? Um, they, they may have uh, small margins or uh, they may be experiencing a downturn of sorts, whatever the case may be. Right. Um, how is it that you approach valuing a company to take on a partner, an investor, et cetera? And a lot of folks are, you know, um, uh, uh, fans of, say, Shark Tank and what have you nowadays. But, you know, how, how is it different in terms of how you do this stuff by the books and by the math? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It, it's, what happens is that... Um, um, you know, we have to do evaluation. Again, it comes down to that valuation. What is it that you're asking someone to, uh, to in, you know, in, in, order for you, in order for him to acquire a, sh a share of your company? You're looking for equity investment. Now, debt, debt investment is, is different than equity investment, right? So um, if you want to use debt to, in, to, in, to, to grow your business, to get more, um, um, you know, acquire more, to get more, more footprints, you know, et cetera, Fine, but when you're looking for an equity partner or an equity investor, you know that equity investor has to have some kind of trust in the number that you're giving him. All right. So if you go on Shark Tank, you say, "Hey, I need a million dollar for five percent of my of my business," and like, "What? Really? How much do you think your business is worth?" And based on what? So and you're like, "Okay, have you done the valuation? No. And what do you think? Well, that's my guess. I'm just guessing. No. You know, it's got to be based on." Some, some concrete evidence, some things that, uh, you know, that's market, that's, that could be related to in, in, in the market. So it's, it's important that people understand that. This is why valuation, you know, if you think, um, you know, you want to sell your business or, or looking for, or look for equity partners, you have to make sure that you know the value of company at all time. Now, you may not have to do evaluation every year, which is what is required because the valuation is really big for one year. Um, uh, but, uh, it's at a minimum do it every couple of years, especially if you're planning, you know, for major events like, uh, you know, equity partners or selling your business or, or anything like that. So it's important to have that valuation done. Okay. And someone with a, a credential such as yourself, um, mm -hmm. and I, I know accountants who cannot pass uh, the test uh, to become certified <laughs> value, uh, valuation experts. Um, will you give the advice and the roadmap or the plan uh, once you create or perform the valuation on how to increase uh, the value of the company? Because, of course, many people are doing this so that they can make informed decisions on how right. to increase the value of their business, mm -hmm. to know where it's at now and what must be changed in order for me to make that number go up. Do you do you offer this sort of advice? To Absolutely. That Absolutely. That part of my consulting, uh, you know, of work as well. Uh, I have a number of big businesses here in this uh, in this area already that I'm work that I worked with in the past that I'm still working with today. That after we do the valuation, after I put together a, an exit plan, then the question becomes: How do I increase the value of the company? I want to be able to get ten million dollars after the sale of this company. Right now, if I sell it, it's gonna be $5 million. So I don't want that. I, I work too hard, I need at least 10 million. So what is it that you need to put in place to increase the value from 5 million to 10 million in the next five years? Okay, we have to put together a growth strategy in place. All right, and that is another presentation I can do if you want me to, to do that in the future. But this is very important. That's gonna follow this one because it allows you to understand, okay, now that I have a plan, how do I execute on that plan? All right, it's good to have a plan, right? You no, know, you don't have a plan and put in the shelf. No, you got to execute on that. But you need to have somebody that helps you do that, you know, because you don't, you don't know, you're not an expert in everything, you know, you know how to, you know, sell your products and things like that. But when it comes to growing, there's so much more that you need to know that you may not know. And a, a consultant may be helpful. So 
that's just the part that I also come into uh, when a uh, situation arises. So on my website, you can see also that I do consulting and uh, you can check that also and see how we can, uh, we can help you. So thank you. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Ashil, for your time today. I, I, I hate it, folks, but you know, I'm sorry we, we run out of time here at one o'clock. <laughs> and I just want to thank everyone for uh, joining in with us here today. And for those who will be able to capture uh, this presentation at a later date. So uh, once again, thank you, Ashil. Any parting thank words? You. No, thank you so much for having me. And uh... If anybody has any question, please don't hesitate to contact me. You have my contact information. And so uh, um, I am open to any question anytime. And you, if you need evaluation, like I said, uh, we can give you a deal, 15% reduction. And also the book that I talked to you about, this book is $20. Really, this is a book. If you can get a copy of this book, you find a lot of the answers to the question that you have. So think about that. Thank you so much, uh, Lucien. And uh, see you later, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we're certainly going to be eager to have you back uh, on with us here at Shield. So thanks so much, and thank you, everyone, for joining in today. We'll be signing off. Take thank care. You. Thank you.